Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. We are in part number four of what was going to be a three-part series, um, our new shortcut card sketches. Today I'm introducing shortcut card sketch number nine. A very quick little bit of housekeeping. If you are in group two of my sampler and sketch series, we are almost there. Thank you so much for bearing with me. We're waiting for one last back-ordered package of paper from Stampin' Up! And it has shipped. Your orders will be going postal shortly. Look out for email with more details if you are in group two and that applies to you. All right, so that housekeeping being done, this is our sketch. It's brand new. I can't wait to see what you do with it. There is a pinned post in our Facebook group with this shortcut card sketch we want to see your cards please come join our group and share what you make with your stampin up supplies and shortcut card sketch number nine shortcut card sketch number nine is laminated and it comes in a binder for those who have joined us for our sampler paper sampler and sketch series it's the only way to get the laminated cards in the binder is to look out for our paper samplers if you're not going to join us for our paper samplers or you're waiting until next time you can print this from a pdf a downloadable pdf that's available at kitchentablestamper.com check in the description below if you're watching on youtube for a link to the post all right let's get started i love how this card turned out we're using the joy of christmas designer series paper and pairing it up with the autumn leaves bundle for a cozy cabin fall type card. I have to say, I'm thrilled with how this turned out and I hope that you like it too. Let's take a look at our sketch and see what we're doing here. Our details for this sketch, layer A is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. It's a standard card base, mine's early espresso. Then I've got layer B, four by five and a quarter, mine is pebbled path. And then layer D, oh, let's go, let's not skip C. Layer C is five by one and three quarters. I've got this gorgeous musical note pattern. Then D is two by one and seven eighths. I've got a beautiful wood grain. And E, two and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. Now you can see already I am doing what I want. Because I say about me, crafty girls do what they want. So I'm not laying out my pieces with the large one on top. Instead, I'm grounding it on the bottom. And so these sketches are a place to start. They're a place to get you crafting, to get you to cut the paper and get going. Because once you cut the paper and get going, the rest just comes together so easily. So use these as a guide. Now for any shape of your choice, I already cut this label so F is any shape of your choice. This is from Very Vanilla, and I used the autumn leaves dyes for this one. The cupcake represents focal images of a focal image of your choice. We are gonna do these leaves. I am so excited about this. And this is our last installment of the series. If you did the paper sampler and um, sketch with level two you got these abundant beauty decorative masks we've learned how to use these tone on tone we've learned how to use these um, two colors we've learned how to emboss with these and now we're going to use the tone on tone and combine it with our die cuts to have die cuts with more character all right so let's go ahead and get our card stock i've got pecan pie it's a scrap I've got Old Olive, it's a scrap. I'm gonna use my Houndstooth mask from The Abundant Beauty and this Falling Leaves mask. Now, when you use these with die cuts, you can do one of two ways. You can first brush your stencil and then die cut, or you can die cut and then brush your die cuts. So sometimes it just is a matter of, oh, this card needs a little something. It just needs a little pop and maybe you've already done your die cutting and you just want to add something sometimes it's a little bit planning ahead so you stencil the scrap and then die cut it we're going to do both ways to create our big maple leaf here and then this small one 
I would pretend like I knew what that was, but I don't. Anybody know what kind of leaf that is? You can leave that in the comments. I think this is oak and this is maple. Maybe this one's an elm. I don't know. You tell me if you know. All right, when I'm doing small pieces and applying um, a design to it, I like to take a little scrap paper. Um, you can use grid paper or copy paper and then a low tack tape. You can use a, a painter's tape or washi tape. I have this little Stampin' Up! one from years and years and years ago that I'm not using anymore. So I'm gonna put a little loop on the back. I'm gonna set it on my paper, mask over the top. And now we're doing like you've learned all along. I've got Old Olive. I'm going to brush on Old Olive ink. If you want to, you can put a little um, of that low tack tape around your mask here to help you keep it in place. It's kind of like an extra hand for you. So um, just take, tack it right down to your scratch paper. Now, when you stencil, you want to go ahead and lift the ink onto the brush with tapping and then tap off because you don't want that big blob in the middle of your stencil. All right, so you just can tap off and then from off the stencil to on the stencil, you're gonna move with light pressure in a circular motion. This gives you much more control of how you build the color. If you came in with that dark splotch right in the middle, of your leaf, then you would be working to build up the color all around it to get the same amount of saturation. So if you start with tapping off, especially on some darker or higher contrast, if you're using color buddies, say you were using Mossy Meadow and you were getting an even more contrast from your color on color, this is gonna give you more control of how the color lays down. All right, so we've got pretty good coverage here. We're gonna keep on circling the mask, cleaning the ink off of the plastic a little bit and using it on the stencil design. I'm gonna go back with a little bit more ink on these edges because sometimes these bits that are off the edges don't get full coverage unless you pay close attention and make sure they get full coverage. And then once you think you got it, you can take, because your paper is tacked to the scratch paper it should be pretty easy to just lift a corner take a look I like the way that looks I'm done and I'm gonna set it aside now we're going to put this mask here's a tip for you please don't scrub this rub this um, you don't want to use a baby wipe and scrub across this you will tear this mask up these delicate little pieces you just take this to the sink you rinse it with cold water, the ink will run right away, and then you're done. Pat it dry very gently with a towel, and that's gonna be the best way to keep these in good shape for years and years of enjoyment, all right? So I'm gonna set that aside so I can take it to the sink. I'm gonna put away my old olive ink pad for a minute, and we're gonna go on to die cutting for just a bit. We'll come back to more stenciling. All right. Let's go back to our scraps here's pecan pie early espresso mossy meadow and cherry cobbler i think i called those all the right name too sometimes i don't and then our stenciled old olive i'm gonna bring my stamp and cut and emboss machine in here and we're gonna see how many of these die cuts we can get on one pass can we get the whole card in one pass I'll let you know in a second. Let's see what we can do. So we've got our early espresso and that is the veins for our maple. And then we've got our pecan pie. That's the leaf for our maple. And then we've got, let's see, we're gonna really see what we can do here. I love, if you don't know, if you don't know me, if you don't watch, if you're not a regular, you don't know this, but I love when I can get all the die cutting I need for a card done in one pass through the machine that is totally winning. All right, so we got our little oak leaves here and we've got two of those on cherry cobbler and mossy meadow for our mystery leaf veins uh, i think we're gonna have to go like that and then 
our mystery leaves. We're going to pop those on and just kind of pay attention to what you can kind of frame what details you want to get on your leaf. All right, look at that. That's all of them. Winning. Okay, did anything shift? Maybe my little mystery leaves a little bit, but I don't want to pick up the whole thing and make it shift more. So I'm just going to take my Take Your Pick tool and slide and just push the die a little bit. See? So I just move the one die back in place without um, messing all the rest of them underneath here. All right, let's go ahead and give this a crank. Ha ha, winning. All right, so we've got our veins. If you wanted to, you could put a little bit of adhesive sheet on the back of that. So this would be peel and stick. Here's our maple. And then look at how cool our mystery leaf looks. And we're gonna put the veins on it. So we'll have layers of texture there once we add this little vein detail it's going to be so cool and then our oak leaves i love the little slits that comprise the details there the vein detail all right let's get this out of here and we're going to do a little bit more brushing all right so we're going to bring our scratch paper back in here now and we've got that little loop of tape still sitting waiting for us so we've planned ahead and we knew we wanted some texture um, some details, some, some excitement on this leaf. So we did our scrap, then we die cut. We'll add a little bit of liquid glue onto the back, or if you put the adhesive sheets on the back before you die cut, you just peel and stick. But let's layer that up and look at the awesome texture that we get. It's just so cool to add that little extra something, right? Cool, huh? Well, this one, we looked at it after we die cut it and we're like, oh, that could really use a little something, right? So we're gonna tack that on and then we're gonna bring in our hound's tooth mask, lay that on, kind of paying attention to where our patterns start and stop. We're gonna take the help by using some low tack tape to hold our mask. And now we're gonna do some pecan pie on pecan pie. We'll brush this and give it that little extra something. Just holding down the mask, tap off first, build the color. If you emboss with your masks, they will get just a little wavy. So I like to just put my hand down next to the mask and kind of pull out the slack. I think it's well worth it for the extra function of the mask. It does get a little wavy. Turn your paper, hold your mask, and then do your brushing. And you'll see when we're done here, it's not gonna affect, we're still gonna get a nice crisp hound's tooth pattern. And I think the edges, don't miss the edges where the pattern is partial. Go all the way around. All right, let's take a look, make sure we like it. You'll see it is nice and crisp, it's not blurry at all. So we've got that multifunction from our mask and gorgeous pattern. Let's slide this out of the way we're done with pecan pie oh no we're not done with pecan pie let's go ahead and glue down our details hold on to pecan pie for just a minute i'm going to show you one more use of your um, brushes if you've got the level two sampler you've got a package of the blending brushes too so of course you can use them with your stencils but the other thing that I like the blending brushes for is um, cleaning the edge details. So we're going to put aside our little leaf. Look at that, isn't that cool? Between the two shades of pecan pie and that early espresso, 
just so much fun. All right, let's bring our card back in here for just a minute. And when you've got darker color base and patterns, sometimes you want to camouflage the edge of your designer series paper because it has a white core. So you can use your brushes. You've got a pack of three if you did your sampler on level two. And this is the perfect way to camouflage that edge without giving it a real strong distress if you just brush the edge. Now, if you wanted to distress or ink the edges, then you would just hold your paper flat and brush and you'll get a gentle inked distressed edge. If you just wanna cover that white, then you hold your paper per or perpendicular to the surface and then you just get that little edge and clean up that white edge that sometimes shows when you've got a dark designer series paper pattern against a dark mat or card base. And it goes really quick and easy with your blending brushes. For this one, I really want the designer series paper to just speak for itself. So you can see going on that you know 90 degree angle and just getting those edges instead of going flat across to make those um, like vintage or distressed looking edge. All right, let's glue our pieces down. I love gluing them down because then I can't lose them. I'm going to first do my designer series papers onto the mat with liquid glue and you're building an equal border around top and bottom, right and left. And then in between, these measurements that you have in the sketch are perfect to have that same equal space in between the designer series paper pieces. I love these simple measurements. The math is all done. You don't have to think about it. You'll just get a really cool way to use designer series paper um, easy button. Now your choice here, I'm going to add dimensional adhesive to the back of this layer to give it a little pop against my um, early espresso card. I'm also going to put a little bit of dimensional adhesive behind the label. So I'll have a double dimensional thing going on here. You may or may not want that. I love these edges for supporting big pieces like when you do a whole mat and bump it up. See, nothing goes to waste and nothing should. Nobody likes a saggy middle, so let's go ahead and supplement in the middle there. And we'll center that right on the card front. A little bit more stamping. Let's set that aside and grab our label. I'm going to stamp my greeting with Pebbled Path. And the Autumn Leaves stamp set is photopolymer. I'm gonna grab a stamp and pierce mat that'll give you nice even lines. This is a fine script greeting. And if you ever have trouble with it, like blurring or um, spreading, grab a stamp and pierce mat. It'll really help you with your uh, photopolymer images, especially fine sentiments like this. Gentle pressure, not much more than the weight of your hand just resting. Let the ink transfer and lift, and you get nice, even script. All right, now for some fiber. With all those cozy patterns, I'm going to use the in color, um, what is this one called? Texture, textured ribbon. It's really got the coolest texture. It works great with our designer series papers and with our fall theme. And we're gonna tie that up with a little bit of linen thread. I'm going to do a loop. And I like to do with this ribbon just a little bit longer than what I need because this ribbon is just a bit shreddy. And so if I do a little bit longer than what I need, once I get it on the card and I'm done handling it, I can give it a haircut, nice clean cut, and it'll stay much nicer that way. So we've got our ribbon and we're going to tie this up with a loop of linen thread. And I like a big 
loopy linen thread bows. So you'll probably need about 14 inches of linen thread. And I've started with probably about 10 inches of the textured ribbon. If you have any um, dexterity issues and tying bows is a problem for you, you can cut away from the spool first and then grab a little bit of um, tear and tape adhesive, adhere your label to your ribbon. So just a little piece. And just snug that right up. Then arrange it how you want it to look on the front of the card. Grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. And you're gonna further secure that with Stampin' Dimensionals. Now set it aside, and I'm gonna show you the best way to tie it. We're gonna adhere our leaves, and I like to dry fit, make sure I'm positive about my placement before I glue. So I'll add my leaves, I'll flip my label, make sure I like where everything's gonna land. When I do, then I'll grab a little bit of liquid glue, and I'll lift and add a dot here, and a little bit here. And slide that one back into place. Now remove the dimensional liner and we can add that to the card. Now that it's secure to the card, we'll finish our bow and that gives you the resistance. You can hold down the card and tie the bow. It's not flapping around anymore and that should help you to get a nicer bow. You can give this a haircut now and that it's secure to the card and it'll stay nice and smooth. Oh, I want a little more angle than that. There we go. And the last step is our little oak leaves and we're going to add a little tilt to our leaves. I'm going to cut some dimensionals in half here. And I'm going to put a half a dimensional right down at the end of this leaf, which lifts that just a tiny bit. And then my dimensionals for the oak leaves. I'm going to put one down flat, a little bit of, with a little bit of liquid glue at the base. And you can tuck it right in. And then we're going to add some dimensional on the second one. Be careful those little slits. And we're going to put that one tucked right under. Last step, how about a little sparkle? I know it's fall leaves, but a little sparkle will really bring it to life. I'm using my Neutrals Adhesive Back Sequins. I love the whole collection of these adhesive back sequins with this Joy of Christmas designer series paper. And as you can see, it is called Joy of Christmas, but you will get so much mileage out of this paper pack. It's absolutely beautiful, and it is not just for Christmas, that's for sure. I've got a lot of sparkle going on here with these kind of bronze color dingles. I don't know how many dingles did I do? Seven dingles on this card. That's a dingly card. All right, there it is. I'm thankful and I am very thankful for all of you who supported my paper sampler and share. Thank you for your patience group too. Your sampler and binders and sketches are coming soon. Look out for a sampler in for of the new hall or of the new January catalog coming soon. There will be a pre-order at the end of the year and it will be the only chance 
to order the new sketches in your paper sampler. Given Stampin' Up's new inventory model, um, we won't have them open-ended anymore. But for those of you who participated, thank you for your support. I hope you enjoyed the series and the new card sketches. Please get on the Facebook group and share what you do with your card sketches and your Stampin' Up supplies. It's facebook.com slash groups slash kitchen table stamper craft social. There's a link in the description below. And if you've got any questions, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email staycrafty at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click shop. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.